Shadow, shadow, shadow hunter, 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 shadow
Jay's said that line, it sounds boring anyway. I feel like everything he says in the show is dumbed down like a hundred levels from what we hear him saying in the book. The police take Luke into custody because they found his car that Jace crashed in last episode <laughs> wrapped around a pole. Good going, Jace. Don't you feel that book Jace would have cleaned that shit up? Done something. Bring in Sydney from Vampire Academy, pull a little dust on it so it explodes and melts into nothing. Why would we leave that evidence out? Whatever, they take Luke into custody. Jay sees them walking by. He uses his sight ruin to look at their tags. It's a sight ruin. It's even better than binoculars. <laughs> Did you have to add that about binoculars? Like, you never use binoculars. Why would you even bring it up? Then we go to Izzy. Izzy has decided to grow up, dress like mom, break up with her boyfriend, and stop being a distraction, which I like. I really enjoyed the scene in the police station when someone has to distract the police officer and she's like, I'm not her type, but I think you are. And Alec has to go distract her. Beautiful Alec. So beautiful. When he smiles, I think collectively everyone watching Shadow and Melts. Can I help you? Uh, yeah, yeah, you come, you come here often? This is where I work. <laughs> That's good. He spills the water and we get this cool shot where he throws her badge off the table and it flies through the air and Izzy's like, whoa. It's very Charlie's Angels. I enjoyed that. Jason and Clary de-glamorize in a closet in the police station and Clary comes up with a plan to get the tarot cards from Luke's desk. Now, we have this line that's a play on the line in the book that was cut from the first episode and she asked him how he knew that she wouldn't die and he was like, I was 90% sure. And she slaps him and he goes, what the hell was that? And she says, that was for the other 10%. I think maybe this line would have worked if we had that line, but in this context, it felt so weird. I have a good plan, are you sure? Yeah, about 90%. I apologize for the other 10%. It felt like weird dialogue because we didn't have the first joke to set up for this joke. You could have said that maybe after she slapped him, like 90% of that plan was good. I apologize for the other 10%. Lol, the slapping. So Claire has this whole plan to make it look like she's breaking up with Jace and he cheated on her and she slaps him. I love when she was like, what, you, you cheated on me? And he was like, I, no I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> babe, it was only like two or three times. Come on, come on, babe. <laughs> And then the policemen escort him from the premises and he's like, I have rights! And it was funny. It just didn't feel like Jay is funny from the book. But it's okay. We get this cute scene with Simon making a chart about all the things that point to him turning to a vampire. I just think that Alberto is doing such a good job with everything he's given ever. And then of course he starts having another hallucination. And this hallucination made sense to me based on the hallucinations we've seen before in the show. And it very much reminded me of something Winter from the Lunar Chronicles would see. Jace mentions demon pox. Alec finds out what's going on. He's like, well, this is a disaster. And Jace goes, demon pox is a disaster. This is just an inconvenience. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't delivered perfectly, but it wasn't bad. I liked it. That was cute. Clary asks if Magnus could portal them into the police station where they needed to be and Izzy says that would be awkward. I don't know why it'd be awkward because nothing awkward happened between Alec and Magnus but then she says that Magnus can only portal you places that he's been before. That's not really the rule for portaling. I don't know if she was lying to Clary so that they wouldn't get Magnus involved or if that's real because usually the warlock just creates the portal. It doesn't actually transport you places. You transport yourself that place by thinking of the place you want to be. Luke's friend at the police station is killed and replaced by a demon. I just thought this line was funny because it reminded me of Harry Potter when they tell Luke that she's dead He's like she was my friend and I just immediately hear he was their friend He was the friend for a prisoner of Azkaban <laughs> Anyone else? It just triggered that reaction in my heart. Simon and his sister staged this intervention. It was a really interesting scene. We got to meet his sister. I thought it was completely believable. They think he's on drugs. It's a legitimate concern. He's acting like a psychopath. And then Simon like breaks the table. I don't know why they left him alone after that. I would take him to a doctor if I was his mother. You think you're sick and diseased? We're going to a doctor. And they kind of just leave him in his room. You just broke a table. It's okay. That's a natural thing that happens with he <laughs> we get a scene with Jason and Clary in the elevator. The chemistry between Jason and Clary still isn't really working for me. I don't like when they try to be lovey-dovey. I like when they're just chill. He shows her the night vision ruin. She's like, okay, let me draw it. And he walks up behind her to help. And it just... 
I didn't like it. Just stop trying to make moves. It's weird. You guys don't feel right together. He draws the rune for like half a second and Clary's like, I think I can take it from here. I mean, Clary, you just asked for his help. Let him finish the rune. We get to see the night vision effects. They should have just not showed us the night vision effects. Jace and Clary get to the evidence box. They pull out the cards and Clary holds up the card and what do you know? She can't get into it. Oh, oh, oh no. Looks like you didn't practice getting the shit that you put into paper out of paper just like I talked about last week. I don't understand why when she put the stuff into paper, she didn't try to pull it out. Why did she try to pull that box out on screen so she would learn how to do it? It just seems so unprepared that she wouldn't test her power more. She'd just like do it by accident and be like, oh yeah, this is something I can do. And I wish there was a rune associated with it like there is in the book. I just, it doesn't really make sense this way. We see Izzy's necklace at work in this episode. I'm very happy that this is a thing. I don't know how I feel about the actual visual of it on the show. I wish it would glow with a less 99 cent store feel. Did anyone else pick up on the TARDIS-like noise that was emitting from Izzy's necklace every time it glowed? Is the doctor coming? Chase tried to be funny in this episode. He tries and he almost hits it, but it just falls a little weird like the grandma line, okay? So there's this grandma demon and he goes, Grandma, stab. Clary goes, what the hell? And Jace goes, watch your language in front of grandma. It's just delivered in a strange way. And there's another scene which was almost funny. Like I liked it and then it was just a little weird at the end. They're running and Clary's like, what's the unlock ruin again? And Jace goes, and knocks down the door. Yeah, there we go. There's the Jace I know. And then he says, open sesame. And I'm just like, Oh, why did you add Open Sesame? It was so perfect. And then you had to say Open Sesame. It's like the sequel to your weird abracadabra joke in episode four. I did really like the kicking down the door. In the sense of being a fan of the book and what Clary can do with ruins, I think it's weird that she can't remember a ruin, you know? Because part of her ability is the ruins kind of just come into her mind when she needs to make them. She'll think about unlock and her hand will just do the work. Clary runs, but she gets cornered, and all of a sudden, she's able to get into the card and take out the cup. I can't remember exactly. I don't think that you can use the cup to ward off and control demons in the book like you can in this scene. She takes the cup, and she's like, stop, leave, go away, and holds it in front of her like it's a sword or something, but it's just a cup. In the book, isn't it the sword, the mortal sword that Valentine uses to wield the control Control over the demons? Isn't it having the cup and the sword that allows him to do that? That allows him to do that ritual that opens up hell that Magnus refers to in the beginning of this episode, I think. That opening up the gates of hell is a more complicated process. Okay, this is a big moment that I just did not like in this episode. The rest of it was okay, I could go along with it. And then Clary gets back to the Institute. She runs to Jace, they hug. It doesn't feel romantic to me. I don't know if it felt romantic to you. And then all of a sudden they're making out. And the music is swelling and it's not a score. It's a song with words talking about love. They have such an amazing kiss scene in the book when it means something and they're alone and they're just in an institute and everyone's around and looking at them. Like we had to do it in front of an audience? I mean, that's great if you liked it. I was just so uncomfortable. I literally wrote, what the fuck is this shit? Why are they kissing? We're not there yet. Right before they kissed, Jace was like, remember like the first time I met you, I told you, you have the sight. <laughs> that memory, so sexy. You know, when he brought it up again, she just couldn't resist them anymore. <laughs> You have to sight. And then we go back to poor Simon. Clary, you have to pay attention to Simon. Important shit is going on. And we've been witness to the fact that he has not been normal. I don't know why Jace took the phone away and hung up like Simon's little problem can wait. He's the only one that has a clue as to what is going on with Simon. Why wouldn't he say something? It just seems so selfish, especially since at the end of the last episode, we had this little moment where we feel like Jace kind of bonded with Simon. He's like, Simon, oh, when Simon leaves. He kind of acts like he's empathizing with him. Why would he ignore that now? Why wouldn't he tell Clary or tell someone to go check on him or send Izzy to go see him? We just ignore it and since we stretched this out for so long and there were so many obvious hints that he was a vampire that everyone witnessed, it feels so much worse that everyone's ignoring it. It's so confusing. I mean like finally Simon confronts it and makes the list in this episode but none of the shadow hunters are 
at all concerned, Jace should have said something. I don't understand why he didn't. He wouldn't tell somebody to check up on him because he doesn't want him to go die. I don't think Jace is that cruel. So Simon goes back to Hotel Du Mort and there's this moment where he's like, Raphael, and I just broke into Hamilton. Like I had a complete Hamilton takeover and I was like, Lafayette. It just felt like that song. <laughs> Did anyone else have that? Our episode ends, Simon finally dies. Please share your thoughts, your feelings on anything I said or anything I didn't talk about. I'm Christine, thank you so much for watching. I'm at May on Twitter. I make videos every Tuesday. I'll see you next time. Bye.